Good afternoon, boys and girls. Mrs. Gersador is here to read the third grade read aloud of Super Fudge. We are actually in our last chapter. Okay, um, this is chapter 12, and it's called Tootsie Speaks Out. Tootsie is, as we know, Peter's little baby sister. We know she's walking and crawling all over the place. I think she's going to start talking, too. I wonder what her first words are going to be. Okay. We are going to read part of chapter 12 today, and we'll finish the rest tomorrow, since this is a little bit of a long chapter. Chapter 12, Tootsie Speaks Out. One morning in May, Fudge woke me. Hurry up, he said. You're going to be late for school. Go away, I mumbled. But he pulled off my blanket and shook me. You're really going to be late for school. I looked at my clock. Ten after eight. How come my alarm didn't go off? I wondered as I jumped out of bed. I raced into the bathroom, splashed cold water on my face, threw on some clothes, and headed downstairs. It was quiet in the kitchen. Where is everyone, I asked. Ha, ha, Fudge sang, jumping up and down. Ha, 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 it's Saturday. I really fooled you, didn't I? You little. But he was out the back door and running before I could get my hands on him. Oh, that Fudgy. I clunked back upstairs and got into bed. I'm going to kill that kid, I told myself. I'm going to tear him to little pieces. I'm going to... I tossed and turned, but it was no use. I couldn't get back to sleep. I heard Tootsie babbling. I got up and walked down the hall to her room. She was sitting up in her crib, flinging out toys one at a time. She stood up when she saw me and held out her arms. I lifted her out of her crib. Oh, yuck, I said. You're smelly. I sat her down on her table and changed her diaper. Aw, what a good big brother. Yuck, I said again. The worst thing about babies is diapers. I cleaned her up and dumped plenty of baby powder on her box side. Yuck, Tootsie said. That's right, I told her. Yuck. Is that her first word? Doesn't seem like Peter noticed. I carried her down to the kitchen, put her in her high chair, and gave her a bowl of dry cereal to nibble on. Fudge peeked in the back door. As soon as he saw me, he took off again. But this time, I chased him. When I caught him, I turned him upside down and tossed him over my shoulder and carried him back to the house. I'll scream, he said. You do and you're dead, I told him. If you hurt me, I'll tell, he said. Go ahead and tell. I kicked open the kitchen door. When Tootsie saw Fudge upside down, she clapped her hands and laughed. By then, Fudge's face had turned dark red. Put me down! Put me down! Fudge cried. Never, I said. It was just a joke, he whined. Can't you ever take a joke? Some joke, Fudge kicked and hollered. Put me down! Say please, I told him. Please. Please what? I asked. Please put me down. Say you'll never wake me up on a Saturday morning again. I'll never wake you up on a Saturday morning again. Or a Sunday, I added. Or a Sunday, he repeated. Or a holiday, I said. Or a holiday. Tell me how sorry you are that you did it today, I said. I'm sorry. How sorry? Very sorry. Very, very sorry, I asked. Yes, very, very, very sorry. I stood him up and watched as the blood drained from his face and his color changed from bright purple back to flesh. Ha ha, he said, wriggling away from me. I had my fingers crossed behind my back the whole time. So ha ha ha, none of that was true. He dashed out the back door again. I shook my head. Yuck, Tootsie said. And then she tossed her bowl of dry cereal to the floor. How come you're up so early, Peter? Mom asked an hour later as she pulled her robe around her and yawned. It's a long story, I said. Well, it's certainly a beautiful day. No point in wasting it. She poured a cup of milk for Tootsie. Where's Fudgy? Outside with Turtle, I said. He's such an early bird, Mom said. The early bird catches the worm. Mom nodded and made herself a cup of coffee. I went over to Alex's. Let's do something exciting today, I said. Like what? Alex asked. That's the problem, I said. I don't know. We could dig worms for Mrs. Moldar, Alex suggested. 
Nah. Too early for worms. I told her the fattest ones aren't ready until late summer. Well then, what? Not to think, I said. We sat on the sofa watching stupid Saturday morning cartoons for the next hour. I got an idea in the middle of Spider-Man. How about a picnic, I said. It's a perfect day for a picnic. Where would we have it, Alex said. I don't know. Alex scratched his head. How about the lake? We could watch the university crew rowing while we have lunch. Yeah, that's a good idea, I said. What have you got to eat? Probably nothing, Alex said. We both went into the kitchen. My mother shops on Saturday afternoons. He opened the refrigerator. I was right, he said, slamming the door. Nothing. My father shops on Fridays, I said. Let's go see what we have. At my house, we found cold chicken, tomatoes, rye bread, fresh fruits, and frozen lemonade. Great, Alex said. Let's pack up. I went to work making sandwiches while Alex fixed a thermos of lemonade. Don't forget the salt, Alex said. Right, and the mayonnaise, I added. Can't bring mayonnaise on a picnic, Alex said. Why not? Too gooey. Besides, it makes you sick. Says who? My mother once got food poisoning from eating potato salad on a camping trip, Alex said. But we're not taking potato salad. It was the mayonnaise in the potato salad that did it, Alex said. But we're not going camping, I argued. We're just going to the lake. I don't want any mayonnaise on my food, Alex said. None. Okay, fine, I told him. And I spread mayonnaise on my two pieces of bread. I took the salt shaker out of the lunchbox, held it up, just to make a point that I was putting on the salt, sprinkled some on, of it on Alex's head. Very funny, he said, shaking it off. The screen door slammed. It was Fudge and Turtle. Turtle dove into his water dish and started slurping. Fudge looked around. What you doing? What does it look like we're doing, I said. Making lunch, Fudge said. That's right. We're going on a picnic. We are? Fudge asked. Not we, I told him. Ah, me and Alex. Where are you going for the picnic? The lake. I'll come too. Oh, no, you won't, I said. Why not, he asked. Because you're not invited. That's why. I like picnics, and I like the lake. Too bad. And I said I was sorry. Remember? Yeah, I said. You also told me you had your fingers crossed behind your back, so everything you said was a lie. That was a joke, Bud said. I didn't really have them crossed. You know what happens to kids who lie? I asked. No, what? You'll find out. I shoved him out of the way. He ran out back, calling, Mommy! Mommy! Please can I go to the lake with PETA? No, Mom said. Why not? Because it's too far. There's a lot of traffic on that road. Fudge stomped his feet and yelled, I want to go to the lake. I want to go on the picnic, too. When he saw us come outside with our lunch bags, he raced toward me and attached himself to my leg. Take me! Take me! He begged. Get lost, I said, kicking my leg free. Call Daniel. Count Ladybug. Do something. Bud covered his ears with his hands, opened his mouth, and screamed. He's going to wind up with a sore throat, Alex said. Come on, let's get out of here, I said. We hopped on our bikes and coasted down the driveway. Bud picked up a couple of rocks and hurled them at us. Buddy missed. We could still hear him screaming two blocks away. All right, so Fudgy isn't very happy that he's not invited to go on the picnic with Alex and Peter. And they also, you know, Fudge was a little uh, pain in the tushy this morning with uh, waking up Peter pretending that it was a school day and really it was a Saturday. I know, and I'm sure some of you can really relate to little brothers and sisters, right? Okay, so we will finish the rest of chapter 12 tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Please know I miss you. And stay well.